You look great. You're all showered up. Right. <laughs> so are you in a hotel or something like that? You're in a hotel or something? Oh uh, yeah, I'm in a lobby of a hotel. Oh wow. Oh, you look awesome. awesome, man. The hotel looks good too. <laughs> all right. So I'll ask you some questions, but we'll start like with the big title card. All right. So this is pre-recorded, so Nick, we gotta act like, you know, the crowd's like roaring right now and all that stuff. Uh, I'm reading this ship, I'm gonna try to act like, you know, mix it up with like reading and, you know. So you're being screened tonight at a movie theater that Woody Allen used to come to as a kid and show his, he used to watch stuff there and he shot stuff there. Are you okay with that? That's my first question. You're cool about that? How do you feel about that? You're on Coney Island Avenue right now. Woody Allen went there like all the time. Yeah, it's kid. fine. It? You're okay? Okay, all right, good. Yeah. Okay, so... Your movies have never been easy. They're not, Nick. They're not easy, okay? So part of this uh, Q&A is also straight up. I'm just going to break it down. It's, it's like basically to marinate, to marinate the audience, to prepare them for what they're about to see. Your films, Nick, are straight up very personal cinema, but they are linked to this uh, genre that you are responsible for, linked to, uh, called a Cinema of Transgression. Um, could you tell the audience, uh, first of all, in your, in your words, how would you define uh, your, your cinema? Um, <clears throat> it cannot be defined. You can't put it into words. You have to experience it. Right? I agree, 100%. From, from the work you're doing, uh, you selected works, and you selected a film that I haven't seen yet that I will experience tonight, a new work. And, you sh and you're showing some of your older works. How do you feel? Uh, are, are, is there a relationship between the two? Are they one of the same? <clears throat> no, they're, well, the, the recent films are very different from the earlier films, I would say. Uh, I mean, uh, and my motivation for making them. Uh, but each film is, you know, a different entity, right? Like the earlier films, some of the earlier films are more narrative, telling a story and about, uh, um, maybe, uh, like Police State, you know, it's a uh, black comedy about police brutality based on real experiences, whereas, um, the latest films are more about color and texture, it's, it does involve a real person, and, uh, but then uh, another recent film, uh, Attack of the Particle Disruptors, is uh, utilizing my paintings, which uh, I always wanted to animate, so I found a way to do that. So the paintings are now moving these entities you know, that came from my imagination. Then uh, I did a recent film with Muffin Head. Um, I was inspired by uh, the... Um, costumes and the designs that he makes and wears. Uh, then, I mean, uh, I, I did another film, uh, well, like uh, Thrust in Me, that was uh, made with uh, Richard Kern back in 1984. Right. Black and white film in which uh, I played uh, both male and female characters, yeah. shot in uh, Super 8. And, uh, on the subject of suicide, yeah. Yeah. So it's one of these things. They're not very similar. I don't know. What about te <laughs> uh, technology? I mean, you were using a lot of Super 8. You have there's photos I've seen of you with the Bolex. Now I guess you're using digital media. Do you see a, a a difference in the way you're able to make films with the current technology and the technology available to you back then? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easier now. Uh, <laughs> And we, I like, like this recent film we did, if, if we had shot that in 16 millimeter or, or Super 8, it would have taken maybe months to achieve the visual effects that we were able to do much more easily with uh, uh, just programs on the computer. You know, I mean, like the, this film, the new one, uh, I mean, it's short, you know, three minutes, but uh, we, we were able... I would say in um, maybe 
five or six hours uh, to, you know, complete this film almost, you know, well, except for the color correction and all that stuff that the editor does afterwards. And, uh, you know, so Nick, it's when, really great. When you were doing your early, when you were doing your early, Early works, including the works now, who who would you say has been a constant influence on your work? No, there is not one filmmaker. It's just uh, all, yeah, many, many filmmakers and films have been an influence on me. Mm -hmm. when did My you own life is an influence. <laughs> That's great. And you're in Mexico now, right? You're in Mexico now, yes? Yes, right. Right. And is that is that uh, yeah. effect, is that affecting your your work as far as trans like transmitting t uh, I guess through mi you're using digital files now and you're sending stuff back and forth on computers now or you're mailing yeah, to the right. department yeah right. yeah yeah uh, it enables well uh, the internet and this uh, we transfer and new technology enables me to uh, send films to. Uh, other countries and uh, even edit them that way, which uh, I did with uh, Attack of the Particle Disruptors, which you know was based on my paintings. Then an animator who lived in uh, Bushwick, Nuri Zander, was able to uh, uh, work on the uh, motion of the uh, entities and then uh, send it back to me, and then I could look at it. So, um, it's it's great this uh, new technology. Although I I do pr uh, prefer making personal appearances and traveling. That's nice too. Yeah, I wanted to pay. Listen, I'm paying for this for the Kent. I'm paying. You know, I'm doing my best. You know, my tax refunds. But I'll get you here. I promise. I promise. Um, All right. So uh, casting. Your casting is you know off off the hook. I mean, off the chain. Are you? What's going on with your casting? It's very. Your your casting always seemed to be. Uh, very New York City inspired East Village. Now, what what's going on now? Are you casting right there from the streets? Are you using actual actors and actresses, professional actors and actresses? Or are you just casting from people that seem uh, interesting to you? Casting for people that seem interesting that I meet. Yeah, and there's a lot of interesting people in Mexico City. Uh, unusual people uh, uh, anywhere in the world you might find them. Have you have you stayed in touch with any of your old cast like Annie Sprinkle or uh, any of um, any of that yeah. contingent of people? I guess Lydia Lunch. I think you've done stuff with her still. Uh, I saw Annie Sprinkle in Mexico City a couple years ago. She came and uh, that's great. We met at dinner. Oh wow! That's great. Yeah, and uh, Lydia Lunch. I ran into a couple years ago in New York uh, at St. Mark's Church when we were both in the uh, William Burroughs Centenary. That's great. Show. Yeah. All right, so, so most new people that I work with now. Uh, Nick, with uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your relationship with the Millennium Film Workshop? Like, what was your relationship with the Millennium? Because I do remember you with Howard there. I have gone to screenings of your work there. What the hell was your relationship with the Millennium Film Workshop? Well, when I, I first came to New York, uh, and I was um, in school. I would see these uh, posters for Millennium uh, announcing films that they'd be showing. And uh, Millennium was really the only underground place at the time, back in the uh, late 70s. They'd be showing John Waters movies or Kuchar Brothers or Jack Smith making a personal appearance. Uh, and uh, I went in, uh, to Millennium and saw some of these shows, which were a big inspiration to me. That's awesome. uh, and then... I then discovered that they had a, as a workshop, they, they had editing uh, facilities there and they had a camera that I could rent, you know. Uh, I mean, paying a membership fee, I, I, it got me access to Super 8 uh, equipment, lights, and uh, editing equipment. So it, that was really great for a filmmaker, you know, who didn't have much money at so the time. So some of your early works were used, used equipment from Millennium, actually? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. I edited my first feature there. Which was called? They Eat Scum. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and, uh, the Bogus Man, I also edited there. Oh, okay. I love Bogus Man. Um, so, let's, let's, uh, now you selected the films that we're showing tonight. Could you please tell everyone why you chose these? I know I gave you, I said, listen, we got 60 minutes, an hour, so you had to break that down like that. But why did you make the choices you made? Uh, of the films? Yeah. In the program? Yes. For you mean? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, well, I, I wanted to uh, showcase recent work because um, a lot of times uh, it's people are not familiar with that. But then I also included some, uh, well, it's like a greatest hits assemblage, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, people always want to see Police State. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so I included Thrust in Me and Bogus Man. I, I basically chose the, the best films that, of the short ones, right, uh, to fit within this uh, one hour format. Right? Yeah. Out of all of your films, which uh, is there any particular film ha that has uh, brought you the most trouble as far as audience being upset or angry or? Um, uh, that uh, that was probably War is Menstrual Envy. And and that was because. Uh, well, uh for some reason, uh, it it would make people. Uh, well, there's especially a scene with uh, a burn victim. Uh, a, a kind of erotic scene uh, in the texture of the person's skin, I guess, uh, was uh, shocking and uh, caused distress, physical distress. Uh, one, one person passed out and had to be carried out of the theater. But uh, other people have cried during that scene, so uh, uh, it's great to get a, you know extreme reaction like that. There's some people uh, that I do know that are l dying for this screening and are coming to the screening, and I ask them, like, you know, if there's any question I should ask, like, Nick, what, what would be a question? So I, the, the one question that kept coming up that I'm going to ask you is, what, what's going, what, why are, what is the relationship between you and Kern that it doesn't exist anymore? Is, could you speak about that? Because you guys worked, like, you know, you're, you're so linked back in the early works. You're in Mexico. He can't come get you, you know. Trump's building a wall. You're safe. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, Richard Kern, like all the other filmmakers from the cinema transgression, went in separate directions. You know, that um, partnership we shared as uh, underground, low-budget filmmakers in the 80s um, didn't last very long, which is usually the case with subcultures and movements. Um, so he, he went in a more uh, commercial direction and um, was quite successful in that regard. Uh, when I did it, um, run into him in uh, Berlin a few years ago at the Kunstwerk Museum retrospective and uh, we, we got to spend some time together and he gave me, uh, or we transferred some films onto my hard drive which he liked, uh, like I guess the uh, the first Tarzan movie with Johnny Weissmuller, <laughs> Kern, I should see. <laughs> I guess that was before they had uh, the uh, censorship, uh, so there was uh, I think some nudity in that one. Um, now he, he's a uh, Richard and I. Uh, we're, we always seem to be friends when we meet in person. He's gotcha. uh, quite friendly. It's uh, the, uh, sometimes there's uh, some tension that occurs. Uh, sure. If uh, there's a screening somewhere and uh, somebody, well, I don't know, yeah, who knows? I mean, uh, a lot of times uh, I, I, I discovered, uh, well, that I guess, you know, artists are very competitive and uh, they can be uh, touchy about things. Yeah. But I, I, I don't find myself in competition with anyone at this point. I don't, I don't really pay much attention, you know, although, I, I mean, then, like, other people, the people will send me, you know, announcements every time they do a screening somewhere, or every time they have a book published, you know, as if I cared, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I think in reality, they care, they, they really want me to know what they're doing, you know, I mean, uh, I don't do this to them, but, uh, like, whatever, uh, the people are insecure sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Out of the films you're showing tonight... What would yes. what, what do you feel is the most personal? What would be the most personal film out of the ones you've selected for tonight? And I'm uh, and, and I'm asking because I'm wondering is it Police State because there's something very personal. It, it strikes me. I, I watched all your films this afternoon again, you know, and there's something really intense about. I mean, it's black comedy, but there's stuff that you you know a little bit too much about that there's something personal going on there with the relationship with the police department. You spray painted that car, right? That had to be. They couldn't have been yeah. like, yeah, uh, okay, under consent. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess police days the most personal. Although, although the new one is pretty personal too, because Monica and I uh, very cl uh, we sleep in the same bed together. Yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, I have to see. So she's in the film. I can't wait. So this is like my premiere, my uh, debut of that film as well. So you're in a hotel right now, and they're like, you know, there's waiters and waitresses walking around trying to get in there. Is that what's going on? I uh, know we're, we're in the lobby, and okay. uh, Zubrak is here. Uh, my uh, son, who is, uh, you, you want to come in the shot? Yeah, <laughs> bring your son in. It's making us. Hi, what's his name? Tell, say hi. He's gonna. Hi, what's Monica. up? Hi, how are you guys? Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> this is cool. Wow. All He's right. getting ready. Well, hold on. He's I want to ask a question with all you guys. Get, everyone get in the shot. I'll ask the final question. It has to do with Bogus Man. Everyone, that way your son's in there. All right. It's, it's a, I have a guest. I have a guest. Let your son come. <laughs> Tell your son to come. They all left. I, oh, he oh, might, oh, he'll come back. He'll know. come back. He'll come back. That's good. Don't Here. <laughs> <laughs> In the spirit of bogus man. I have a question for you. In the spirit of bogus man. Let me see if I can <laughs> see it with my glasses. In this part. <laughs> Hold on. You're looking good, man. Thank you. It's hard to read. It's, uh, the mask is huge. Hold on. Um. Uh, time for uh, a remake, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. It's another bogus man. Mr. Trump. They're all bogus, all leaders. In bogus man, you have a defecting CIA agent. And whistleblower broadcasting to the world claims, huge claims that the President of the United States is a government-issued clone and a bogus man. Given the recent unprecedented election of me, a very successful business tycoon, and the current trend of WikiLeaks and whistleblowers, do you think that you are ahead of your time by making the film Bogus Man? Of course! <laughs> do you have any regrets with the kind of films that you have made and that are available on DVD for the world to see? Any regrets, Nick? Uh, no. History will absolve me. I hope. One last question, and it's an easy one. Hold on. Do you have any last words you want to share with your audience? <laughs> Uh, adios, amigos. Adios. See you soon. Jump we over the wall. Bye. 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 Bye, your son, too. Bye-bye, son. Bye. Thank you for setting up Skype. We'll be in touch, Nick. Bye. <laughs>